I wanted to uh, do these two questions. I kind of held off doing these yesterday because I thought it would work for kind of refreshing what we did to start with these. So who is going to help us start this one off? Five. Um, Sophia? You think you can help me start E? Do you remember what we did with the power rule? Or do you want me to go on to somebody else? Give you time to work first. I see you mentally calculating. That's why I'm wondering. <laughs> okay, we'll go on to somebody else. Another one. <laughs> um, I predict number six is next. Because I think you've got called on just about every day as well. Okay. Anything? So I, I was trying. I was hoping I could like tell you guys nothing about this and kind of see where it went, and and I can help you along with it if you need it. The first term would be six x. You can you can add them up. Yeah, I forgot to put the marker on, so it was. Uh, correct. So you get six x from taking the two times the three. Okay. Uh, I don't know how to do the middle one. Okay. The last one would be x to the negative one half. Right. Um, you changed it into two x to the half to start with, probably. Yeah. Yep. So then you'd get one x to the negative half. Yes. Good. Yeah. I mean, I figured you did it that way. I thought I would check. Um, okay. The middle term unsure. Yeah. Okay. Who's going to help us with the middle term? 18. Kylie. Um, since the power of x is negative 2, would it be... You sound so official. Would it be 8 over x cubed? That was a big jump. I don't think a lot of people caught that. You went from a power of x2. <laughs> Okay, good, 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 good. Perfect. You were just doing a lot in your head. Okay, excellent. Um, and yes, we could simplify that, but we're just, I'm, I wanted us to practice power rule. Uh, okay, F. F is a little bit harder. I, I don't feel like I want to call on somebody. Does anybody know what we should probably do first on F? You're rolling, you can't answer? Oh. Yeah. Uh, that sounded like a question, I'll be honest. Okay, what do you, what would that do if we did it? Well, you'd get 8x to the third divided by x, which would be 8x squared, uh, plus 4x, uh, minus 3 over x, but it would also just change to a negative power. Perfect, yep, perfect. I wasn't saying you're wrong, I was just hoping you could explain it. <clears throat> Very nice. Uh, okay, so if you have if you have a denominator that is a single term, frequently what you're going to do is separate the fraction and kind of simplify everything. So in this case, just divide them all by x. And then that gives you th three separate terms, which allows us to do three separate derivatives. Okay, so f prime of x. Okay, now we, now we should be able to call on somebody. One? One? Yeah. Also, pretty frequently. <laughs> it's like the same numbers every time in here. <laughs> yeah, that, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be funny if some of them were actually weighted? Good. 
So a, a linear term is just the number. Perfect, perfect, very nice. Um, and this is, you know, this is a lot of kind of just how the power rule is going to work. Now, it would be super nice for derivative purposes if everything was just power rule, but it doesn't really work that way. So then we have other kinds of functions, and it's your favorite, everybody's favorite. Now, here's, here's the weird part. So while, while if I took a poll, I know the popularity of trig would be pretty low. Um, derivatives of trig functions are actually far easier than just working trig functions. Like it doesn't seem like it should be, but it, it actually is. Um, derivatives of polynomials, you know, they were actually pretty difficult until we learned the power rule. The derivatives of trig functions is actually very straightforward and very easy. And I, I won't explain why yet, but uh, so the derivative of sine is cosine. Wait, is it just a phase shift, basically? No, I mean, it looks that way. Yeah, but like so if you look at the slopes everywhere on sine, the answer for the slopes would be the same as the answers from cosine. This is kind of odd. So I mean, it looks like a phase shift, but it doesn't work the same way. Now, derivative of cosine, obviously you would expect it to be sine, which it's not. So it's negative sine. It's not far off. But this is definitely something that you'll want to memorize. So the way that most people start memorizing this is they learn that the derivative of sine is cosine. Like, that's the first one they learn, they get it down pat. Then they, in your head, you just need to remember that the derivative of cosine is the opposite. So it'd be opposite sine. Derivative of tangent, nothing that helps other than to memorize it. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. Nothing obvious about it. But the derivative is also not super complicated. So where you're going to see these is you're probably going to have functions that are mixed things. Like you might have a function that says um, 5x to the third power plus sine of x minus 2 over x, and you're going to be asked to find the derivative of it. And by now you kind of know that you do derivatives of individual terms. So when you get to the derivative of sine, well, it's just cosine. Like, there's nothing to calculate. You just know it's derivative. So the, the derivative of trig functions is actually really easy. I know most of you are, like, scared to death of trig. Like, it, that's, what, that's the appearance I see whenever there's trig things. Like, most of you just immediately, like, shut down. Um, you don't really do much with, like, the unit circle when we're doing derivatives. So it, it is trig, but, like, it's not finding trig values. Um, so this is here, but it's actually not super useful. Like, it's kind of cool to be able to do this, but it doesn't really help you with anything, so um, we're not going to take the time to do it. This tells you how you can graph a derivative, though. So if you want to do it, you type that in. Instead of typing at an individual x value, you find the derivative at x equals x. And then it finds it for every x value. OK, moving on. This page doesn't look super nice either. And if we were to take the time to do this, it would take forever. So I'm going to go over how we would prove this, but we're not going to actually prove it. One more time. No, 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 not even close. No, you will not have to do this on the AP exam. If you had to do it on the AP exam, I would take the time to go through all of this. So this is basically saying find the derivative of sine of x and show that the answer is actually cosine of x. 
No. No, no, no. That, let me show you what it is first, and then you'll see you, you won't. Um, so the, the way that we learned how to do derivatives at first was the limit process, right? So if we do the limit as h approaches 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine of x uh, over h. Now, I know a lot of you would probably stop there because it just seems like there's nothing to do. Like, there's nothing for us to square. There's nothing to simplify. What you're going to do is go back to your pre-calc glory days. And on your, your trig cheat sheet, you have a formula for sum of two angles. And there's, I don't, I... I, I should pretend I know what it is, but Shenny's going to tell it to me like I knew what it was, and I'll verify it. Um, sine of a plus b plus sine of a cos sine of b. Whoa, 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 too fast. <laughs> sine of a plus b equals sine of a cos sine of b plus or minus, so in this case it would be minus, right? Uh, no. Oh, plus or minus? Of so the original one yeah. probably says sine of x, or sine of a plus and minus b. Yeah. Okay, so if the plus and minus stays plus and minus, then the, the top symbol is the same. So then it's cosine of x, uh, sine of, or sine of h, cosine of x? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, I was just verifying it that uh, you told it to me correct. And then minus sine of x. Oh, I can't write that line. And my chair is turning while I'm trying to draw a line, so it makes it worse. Uh, well, we can do factoring and simplifying. And, uh, well, a lot of work in this big, giant space. And you get to the end, and it says cosine. But you, you have to use this replacement formula to just even start it. And we definitely are not going to go through that. But it, like, say, your college calculus class, for sure, that's one thing you're going to be doing together. Like, most college calculus classes go through and actually do all the proofs. And like, I try to focus more on like, what you're actually doing rather than the proof behind it. Like, I'd rather you learn how to do something more than why it works, to be honest. Because the first time, even if somebody tells you why something works, you're not going to get it. Like you just, calc is so much coming at you at once that it's very difficult to like even understand why something works, even if you're told it. So I, I like you guys to just learn processes first. So uh, there, we just proved it. <coughs> then we get to the next page, which is actually the last page. And um, we should be done with notes somewhat soon. You guys will actually have a little bit of time to work today. So the first derivative is that one. Second one is this one. So e to the x is everyone's favorite derivative. A poor of a y is it everyone's favorite derivative? Honestly, that was pretty that was pretty good of you on the spot to just like read what was up there. That was impressive. It's correct. Uh, everybody loves it because the derivative is the exact same thing of, as it started with. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That's what that says. And it's, it's really weird to think about. It's, it's super nice in terms of finding answers, but it's really weird to think about that like say, if you go to x equals two, the height of the point is e squared, and the slope of that point is e squared. So that, that works at every location on e to the x. So it's really odd. Oh, you know what? I totally forgot. I totally skipped over the calling on the numbers. That was my fault. Actually, he's from rolling. Definitely from rolling? <laughs> from like being rolled. 
Oh, yeah, that's fair. You, lo you were looking tired. I felt like I needed to wake you up. I, no, that came out wrong. I wasn't trying to say you looked tired. Jenny, roll before I dig myself in a oh. further hole. <laughs> 23. 23. Rebecca. How about the second one? What does that say? Do you want me to get a drink and then you can um, discuss with people around you? Sure. Okay, I can do that. My voice is feeling parched. Did you immediately go to Jenny? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I'm never letting you guys pick partners. Oh, don't look at A yet. Just what I had circled, the second thing that was circled. Oh, I wasn't asking you to do problem A. Is that what you thought? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Got it. I was just hoping you could tell me what that says that I have circled. The one that says if f of x equals ln of x, then f prime of x. Like, I was hoping you could just explain that one slightly. What is one divided by that number? You're correct. You're correct. But it's important to know what you're actually reading off. Like you said, if x is greater than zero, then it's one divided by the number. But what is its? Okay. What is its? You referred to it. Well, I don't think you meant that, but that's okay if that's all right. If, that's why I just said it's okay if, because I, I feel like the more I'll ask, the, the worse it probably be. Okay, can anybody help her out? Like, what am I asking? Or am I asking a bad question? Because that's very possible. Sometime, sometimes it, I think I'm asking a clear question, but it's not. Oh, sorry. Say it again. Yes. So if your original function is the natural log of x, then the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. It's really strange that the derivative has nothing to do with natural log. And it, it, I mean, it's, it definitely is one of the weirder ones. Um, it does make sense in, in other parts if you think about it, but I mean, you're probably not there yet. And that's all right. Um, sure, let's roll somebody else. Four. Four? 24. Well, that's not the same at all. Josh, what is natural log of x again? Because I bet a lot of people forgot. Um, I don't know. Did Josh forget too? Yeah. Oh. Jenny, since he's going to ask you for help anyway. Yeah. Um, like roll or just like the block? <laughs> Uh, instead of me taking another drink, I'll just have to go to the bathroom way too early if I keep going for drinks. <laughs> um, usually the log is, usually, if you take... Nope, pause. Yeah. Josh, calling somebody else for help. Perfect. Okay, roll the, we'll just roll. Six. Roll the roll. Six. Oh my God. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> eight. Remember, you're eight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's natural log of X? because everybody in here seems to have forgotten. Because that's short notation for something else. <laughs> Should I just open it up to anybody? Oh, we have one hand. Log of E? Yes. You mean it correct, but yes. 
Um, it's log base e log base. of x. So natural log is a logarithm. Um, I mean, that's why they call it natural log. But So it's log base e. So everything is based off of e, which coincidentally is why it went along with e to the x. Those two are inverse. OK, so then let's go down to a. Now here's where you're going to not like it, because you have to remember logarithm properties. Now, I was really impressed at how well third hour remembered the properties. Let's show them up. I don't think we can trust them. Why not? You're going to be disappointed. That's true. You guys believed them that the quiz was difficult today. OK, who did we roll? 25. 25. Uh, yep. Do you remember what we can do with that, with that cubed inside the natural log of x cubed? There's a property that deals with powers and size. And it benefits us to be able to rewrite them first. How about an educated guess? And if you don't remember, that's fine. Bring it to the front. Yep. If that was a total guess, then that was pretty good. So if you have a power on the inside of a natural log, you can bring it out front as a multiplier. Now, this says 3 times natural log of x. And if I'm trying to do the derivative, if I have a constant multiplier, like 3, my derivative automatically will have the same constant multiplier. And then the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. And I mean, obviously, we can simplify this to 3 over x, but still. Why can't you just do 1 over x? Um, you won't learn why until the beginning of unit 3. Cool. I mean, it's a good question. Um, if you guys didn't hear the question, he, Tinny asked why. Why can't we just do 1 over x cubed? And it seems logical, like, like you're just treating this as something, right? Um, but there actually is a very good reason why you can't. And we don't learn about the. It's called the chain rule. We're not going to learn about it until the beginning of unit 3. So we are very specifically only working with plain derivatives for right now. And we'll, we're trying to hold off on complications so that it's not so overwhelming. OK, B. B, we have to simplify this first. Um, should we call on somebody still? Sure. Kathy? Thoughts on how to simplify this first? Do you remember what a times does? Perfect. Now, I don't know. Addition is correct. Do you think you could tell me what to write? Because this is where mistakes are often made. Or is that asking for too much detail? Uh, there was the roller is being moved. I didn't hear a word. Translate, please. Natural log of x squared plus natural log of x. Oh, good. I don't know why, but over on that side of the room, it's just like it's. I don't even hear it at all. <laughs> Um, but absolutely perfect. So if you have addition, or if you have multiplication on the inside of natural log, you can rewrite it as addition of two natural log. Okay, okay, next person. 17? Uh, she already went. Remember? What? I can do one, but I don't know which one. All right, I can live with that. Look at that, you volunteering for more. Oh, 
Why do you always roll that when people talk? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Almost trying to not give them <laughs> I find it funny. It's just, uh, okay. Oh, so do you skip to the derivative? Yeah. I was going to say, I didn't hear what you actually said before that. What did you say before this? So, I, move the 2 to the front and then that's the log. Oh, OK. Yep. And then that's where you were saying 2 over x? Yeah. Very good. I didn't know OK. That's all right. Um, the second part is actually identical. It feels like it should be more difficult. But you, you still have this as an exponent. So you move it to the front. So it's x times l and a b. And then ln of e is 1, because this means e to what power is e. So it's 1. So this is just x, and then the derivative of x is 1. Do you want me to explain that part? So right here, it is 1 times x. Is that what you meant this? Are you talking about from this one? Yeah. OK, so if we have 1x, the derivative of 1x would be 1. Oh, okay. So like if this was a 3x, it's usually easier to kind of make sense in the head. Okay, yeah. The derivative would be 3. Okay. The derivative of regular x is 1. How, how about these first two? How'd that go? Yeah, semi, okay. So you got some iffy, iffy ones. Um, and not like I'm expecting you to be like pros at it yet. I mean, that's the whole point of why we're doing this. Do you th guys think you should be able to try C maybe D? I will tell you, you probably will get stuck in the middle of D and if you do, that's okay. Maybe just try as much of D as you can. D is deceptively difficult. Look at that, how's that? Pretty good for using D. C actually, I'm going to guess C went pretty quick for you. Yeah, there was just two parts to it. Is it 1 over x ln of x? Or does it not go both ways? No, and that's why this is here, actually. Um, ah. Because there's so much carryover from a lot of our information that it's easy to get them confused. So what you're actually thinking about is called the antiderivative. If the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, the antiderivative would be ln of x. We were trying to take the derivative of 1 over x. Cool. It, I know, it, it's easy to get the information jumbled. Did a lot of you start D already? I'm going to guess you probably remember the first step was to make it subtraction. Okay. And then that's where some people get stuck. And I say stuck because maybe they didn't even know they were stuck. The next step on this one is to write it as four terms. ln of 2 plus ln of e to the x 
minus ln of 3 minus ln of x. And that's, I mean, like, it's, it's kind of difficult to see 2e to the x is, I mean, like, you look at it as one thing, probably, um, but it is multiplication. So we purposely separated the division into subtraction, and then both the top and the bottom were being multiplied. So I separate those with addition. <clears throat> the minus sign distributes to both of the second ones, and that's why they're both minuses. And now that we have everything with individual separate terms, I guess this one we could rewrite as x times ln of e, which is just x. Now you can do the derivative of each of the four terms. Anybody feel like they think they have the answer for d? Part of it is easy and part of it is semi-tricky, even though it's not supposed to be. But it usually is. Yeah? Is it one Say it again. One half. Minus. Wait. I think you have the one and the one over backwards. I guess ln of two is one half. No. Oh. But uh, that wasn't the part I was asking about. Oh. Never mind. Okay. You have the right idea, though. Don't don't feel bad about your answer. So I was expecting multiple people to have one over two as an answer. Is that is that probably true? Okay. But the answer is zero. Anybody, anybody think they can say it? Really? Yeah, I, I, because uh, doing it in power rules <laughs> is easier. <laughs> words. Well, and then calc words are hard on top of it, so. Uh, okay, what about power rule? I heard you say power rule, but there's no power rule up here. Well, I could... So doing it by term by term... Okay. Um, ln of, the derivative of ln of, of 2 yep. is 0. Derivative of oh, that's what I was actually asking you about. The, the ln of 2, how come the derivative is 0? I mean, like you're saying it like it's obvious, but I think a lot of people missed it. A limit of two is an actual number. It's yeah. Not, it's not, there's no variable there. <clears throat> Correct. So it would be zero. The derivative, the derivative of ln of x is one over x, but that only counts if it's a variable itself. So two is a constant. Ln of two is an actual number, like, like e to some power is two. So like you can type it in the calculator and get a decimal. So the derivative of a constant is zero. Oh, were you talking about power rule for the x? Like the, the derivative, this is like x to the first or something? Yeah, that works if it was, I was just, okay. Okay, um, and then the L of x at the end, derivative of that we just kind of learned up above. D is, it's, it's more difficult than you would expect it to be. Like it looked like it was semi-straightforward until you do the parts out. Okay. Um, should we do E together or should we skip that one? Do it? Okay, let's just do it quick together. <clears throat> I guess when I'm looking at this one, I immediately would like to simplify it by spreading it apart with addition. So natural log of four plus natural log of x cubed plus natural log of e to the x. And then I simplify those last two terms a little bit more. And you could do this in your head. You don't have to write it out line by line like I am. I'm, I'm mainly doing this line by lines for your notes. So this is gonna turn into three ln of x. This is gonna turn into x times ln of e which is just x. And when you go to do derivatives, this was gonna be zero. This three is a multiplier, 
So the 3 is going to come down with the derivative. Derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Derivative of x is 1. So if you want to simplify it, it's 3 over x plus 1, or 3 plus x all over x. Yeah? It's not right. Um, so that, that's where we're going to learn something called the chain rule. Uh, so for, for right now, like our derivative property, like up here when we learned the derivative of ln of x, for right now it specifically has to be just an x. We're going to learn how to do it for other things later. But there's, there's actually extra steps involved. And that's, that's why 1 over x cubed is not the same thing as 3 over x. Yeah? Which rule allows you to use the x cubed? Say it again? How did you move the, so the x cubed, how did you move the 3 in front? Oh, um, that's natural log property of exponents. I doubt it's in your notes. Cool. That's just Something. algebra 2 note. Yeah. Cool. I, I mean, like, not saying you guys actually remember all the properties, just that's where they're from. Yeah. Okay, F. I wanted to get to F because it's, it's, it should be easy, but it's just like, it's weird. Oh, Rylan, we need to involve you. We need to get you woken up. It's Friday afternoon. We only have like 10 minutes left. It's time to be excited because you get to go home for the weekend. <laughs> you ready? But we didn't do anything. OK, so obviously we're trying to take the derivative. Um, out of these, there's two terms. So the minus sign in the middle means I'm kind of focused on them separately. Anything you want to do to either of these two terms to make it look simpler to work with? Is this the time for me to take a drink so you can discuss? Yes. Okay. There's not much time left, so we're okay. I can start drinking. Again. What are you peeking for? Okay, <laughs> how come we change it to x to the negative two thirds power instead? Why do we do that? Why? Yeah, because I'm going to guess that's what you were going to tell me. Yes. Okay, I kind of heard it already, so I figured that's what was coming. Why did we do that? Because <laughs> that is an excellent non-answer. <laughs> because it's definitely correct but it says nothing. Um, we wanted to rewrite it like this because then it's a power and allows us to use the power rule. And it's okay if you don't know how to explain why we do something like, but <clears throat> that, that's exactly why we wanted to rewrite it as a power because we know a way to take derivatives of powers. Uh, okay, so g prime of x. Uh, let's see, we'll do the second one first because I have a feeling that's the one that's semi-straightforward. So this becomes positive 2 thirds x. Subtract 1, I'm going to get negative 5 thirds. That's a fun term. Um, Lucas. Yeah. You're also looking a little tired back there. <laughs> Hiding in the back, not allowed. How do I take the derivative of pi e to the x? Pi e to the x? Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure what I should say. It won't give it away. Uh, I have no clue. 
<laughs> you're honest. You're honest. So how about I'll point over here. See how this one was three times ln of x? And when I did the derivative of three times ln of x, the three is a constant multiplier. And so my derivative automatically has the same multiplier. And then I have a variable expression, so the derivative of the variable expression is that. So how does that apply over here? Why did I just use that as an example? Pi times one over zero x. Very close. So pi is the multiplier. It's a, it's a number multiplier, so its derivative will have the exact same multiplier. And then if you look at the top of the page, what's the derivative of e to the x? Oh, yeah. Uh, a to the x. Perfect. So the derivative of pi e to the x is pi e to the x. OK. Now, these are, these are actually pretty difficult ones. They cover all sorts of different things. And um, in your homework, it, it definitely should be slightly simpler than this. So uh, there we go. We made it all the way through the section. Yeah.